So as I'm pulling up to my office, I get a DM on Instagram asking me, is it possible to have two jobs as a flight attendant? So I figured this would be a good time to record a video and let y'all know what I think about how you can balance two careers, one being a flight attendant. Stay tuned. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, welcome. My name is Alexia Nicole and I am living my life by design. I get a lot of emails and messages about how I balance my real estate career as well as being a new flight attendant. You know, it can definitely be tricky with the schedule that you get. Being a flight attendant, being a reserve flight attendant really makes it hard. Um, but I'm blessed to still be able to balance both. So let me just kind of start off with the backstory of when I began real estate. I began real estate in, um, let's just say August of 2016. That was pretty much a year before I began my flight attendant career. So I had one full year under my belt to learn real estate. Um, I did it full time to really understand how it works, how I would want my schedule, what type of attention your clients are going to need, and how much time you need to have available, right? So there's a lot of people that ask me that are current flight attendants that ask, can they get into real estate? Um, I'm going to say that all really depends on, are you on reserve? Um, how is your schedule at your airline? What type of flexibility do you have? Because as a real estate agent, and if you're going into it to be full time and really want to make a great income from it, it's going to require a lot of your time and dedication. One, just to, to train and learn the business. Two, um, if you're working with buyers, you're going to need a lot of time to show them homes and things of that sort. So is it possible? Yeah. Is it easy? Not necessarily. So for me, I've stepped back from directly working with buyers and sellers, and now I focus mostly on referrals and recruiting. With the brokerage I'm with, I'm with Keller Williams Realty. Um, we are international. We have um, brokerages throughout the United States and all 50 states. You can find us everywhere if you need more information on that. Feel free to email me, call me, text me. I'd be happy to share that information with you. How I'm able to do that is, so if I meet someone anywhere and we just so happen to um, cross the conversation of real estate and they're wanting to buy or sell, no matter where they live, I can refer them to another Preferably a Keller Williams agent. I can refer to any other agents outside of our brokerage, but Keller Williams is my family, so I'm going to keep it within the family. So I usually refer them to another Keller Williams agent in whatever city, state, town that they're living in. I get a piece of the pie from that, for being that referral agent, usually 25%. Um, and then I also do recruiting um, because here at Keller Williams, we have a profit share model that is amazing. If I recruit, meaning if someone comes to me and says, hey Alexia, I'm really interested in real estate. Um, I would love to know more about Keller Williams, the company overall. And if I share information with them and if they end up signing up at Keller Williams, and if they list me as their sponsor, the company itself will share profits with me. Not that person, not that individual, but the company itself will share profits with me. It's way more detailed than that, but I'm just going to leave it at that. So those are my main two focuses right now in real estate. That will definitely change. I keep my license active for a reason because I still have people that call me to this day that still want to buy and sell. I just don't promote or market myself in that way right now because I just know it would be unfair to clients that I can't be there and give them the time and dedication that they need to be the great realtor that I want to be and, and that I am. So if I get anybody that wants to list their homes, usually I just refer those out to um, someone within my office. 
uh, most likely my parents because my parents are also realtors here at the same office and I get that referral fee. If I get a buyer, I really enjoy working with buyers. So I have worked with a few buyers while I've still while I've started my um, flight attendant career. It just depends on how needy they are. But usually with the buyer, you know, you walk through the whole process with them. I really get connected with them. You fall in love with homes together. You know, you watch them make some of the biggest decisions of their lives. I really, really love that interaction. So if I do um, have a buyer come to me and they want to buy a home, I definitely stay throughout the process with them. If I'm, you know, flying about somewhere, if I'm in New York and I can't get back home to show them houses, I have someone from my office um, take them out and actually show the homes for me. That you can call like a, a showing agent. They go out, they show them homes, um, and then I pay the showing agent a certain percentage for doing that portion of the job. So real estate allows you to to really maneuver this career any way you want to. And the other thing that I forgot to mention um, is that in real estate, you are your boss. You were self-employed. Yes, um, I'm under the umbrella of Keller Williams, but I am an independent contractor here. So there, I have no, no schedule that I have to um, maintain, no certain hours a month that I have to come in, no amount of sales that I have to meet. I do what I want with my business. That's how I'm able to, to balance this. There's a lot more that does go into it in the background and things like that, but I make it work. And then also in real estate, you can do leases as well. And leases are majority of what I have been doing since I really started flying because they're very quick and easy. So if somebody is looking to just rent a home, you know, that's a real quick, easy transaction. You know, you show them a couple homes, they pick one, you do your paperwork, call a day, I get my commission check. If it's an apartment, that's even better because usually people can go look at apartments on their own. You can still be their referral source, apartment locator, or things like that. And then I receive a commission check from that as well. So that's how I'm blessed, you know, to be able to still afford a lifestyle that keeps me happy on a flight attendant reserve check um, is from my real estate income because if not, <laughs> I, I don't know y'all, it, it, it would be really tough. I do really still try to just live off of my flight attendant salary and use my real estate income just to pay whatever real estate dues and fees that I have. Real estate is a career where you pay fees and dues on a monthly basis. Um, so hopefully you're making enough commission to make a great profit to still, you know, be able to afford the lifestyle of being a real estate agent. It's not really easy all the time. All that being said, can you yourself have another job, part-time job, full-time job, any other career, as well as being a flight attendant? And I'm definitely gonna say the answer is yes. Yes, 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 you can. You just have to find something that's going to be flexible enough, especially if you're a reserve flight attendant. So how a reserve flight attendant schedule works, and I can only really speak for my airline, um, because that's the only airline that I've ever worked for. I kind of have an idea how some of the other ones work. Here at my airline, airline that's very near and dear to my heart, we work 18 days a month and we're off 12 days a month. Obviously that's more off days than the average career, right? 12 days a month is really good. Um, because technically this is a job where you work part-time hours, but it's still treated as a full-time job. So I can bid for my schedule, I can bid for days off and things like that before our schedules are actually created. Um, and so then I can have certain days off that I've already requested and then they're already on my schedule. Or I can just let the um, scheduling gods give me whatever they want and then I can just swap my days around when I need to move days or like if I want a weekend off. Like for instance, I have a wedding to attend next weekend. So I wasn't off. Um, but I'm able to swap my off days for um, working days. So I just got on um, our scheduling thing and we just have to check to make sure that 
um, there are enough people sitting reserved that day for me to be able to take off that day. All I did was swap two off days for two working days. So I just shifted some days around. So I'm still working the same amount of days. I'm still off the same amount of days. I've just moved the days to different times in the month. It's really that simple. Um, or you can also swap days with other crew members, other flight attendants. So if you don't have the availability to swap it within your own schedule, um, swap it with someone else. There's a trade board and things like that where you can go on and see who wants to stay off or who wants this or all kind of things like that. So flight attendant schedules are truly very flexible, very blessed to have that part because if I need to come home on the whim, um, I can do that as long as there's enough people working or sitting reserved that day. If there's not, then they'll deny me and say, no, we need you. But as soon as one other person swaps into that day and I can take off, I think you did a video with my friend Roberto and he was working at a retail store um, and he was, you know, really trying to make it work. But sometimes it can get really difficult. So unfortunately, he had to um, leave that retail store because he just kept having schedule confliction. We're on call, so we may think or we won't get used that day and I can fly out and get to work on time or there might be delays, you know, like there's all kind of things that can interfere with your plans. And if you have a scheduled job like that, that is a plan. And I like to say, whenever you have a plan, crew scheduling calls you and messes up those plans so don't make plans <laughs> I believe that really y'all because when I don't make plans they never call but if I have a plan I have somewhere to go they call and mess it all up so you will have to have a job that's going to be very flexible or where you can create your own hours and know for sure that you are truly available that day once you're not on reserve and once you actually have a line, a line meaning when you receive your schedule, it doesn't say reserve, reserve, reserve. It says, okay, you're going, you have a three day trip and you're going here, here, and here, and you're getting back at this time. Once you actually have a line, that will definitely make it easier for you to have another career because um, as flight attendants, and I believe most airlines do this, you get your schedule a good month in advance. Today is November the six and I should have my December schedule by the 9th of November so I get it about a month in advance I have at least three weeks prior to the month starting to know what my schedule is gonna be it allows me to be able to plan things out and move days around and and um, plan what I'm gonna do during that month because I know so far in advance the days that I'm actually on reserve when I have to work but being on reserve, once again, you never know when your trips are going to be, where you're going to go, what time you're going to get back, none of that. So you still have to be very, very flexible. Speaking about that, being on reserve and um, getting a line, like I mentioned to y'all, I applied for our um, first class program and I got the position. So I just found out the other day that I will start that position next February. I do have to go back to training for that. So we have one training that will be in New York and then I have another training where I actually have to go back to Orlando where I did my initial training for six days and learn that. And then I'll actually start flying as um, an, what we call an onboard lead um, for my airline. I'll start that in February. So the reason that I chose to go that route is one is because I really do like giving great service. I told y'all before, we don't really get trained in service in the initial training. It's all about safety. I think we spent half a day going over service. So we, you know, I still do things and I give the best service that I can in core and all of that stuff, but we're not actually trained on how to do things the proper way. So that was one thing that definitely interested me because I knew that I would be trained to a certain standard and I want to make sure that I'm upholding that standard. <laughs> this may sound a little considered big headed, but I like it when customers give me compliments and tell me that, you know, I gave really great service. Like, I really enjoy that. It makes me enjoy my job so much more knowing that I am pleasing people with the service that I'm giving. Like, I don't just do this job just to fly around, y'all. Like, yes, is it nice to have layovers to different cities and see places I've never seen? Absolutely. But it truly does bring me joy knowing that, you know, people enjoyed their experience 
with me in their cabin as their flight attendant. You know, I, I really try to make that fun. Another reason is because, like I've been saying, I'm a reserve flight attendant. And here at my company, based in um, New York, JFK, I could be on reserve for about a good year. So I was thinking I would be on reserve probably until next July or August is what my initial thought was if I just stayed in the core program. But you never know. You know, you just, you really never know. If they slow down hiring, it could be longer. If they pick up hiring, it could be faster. Going here will give me a line, an actual schedule. And I only have five reserve days for the month which is amazing. Instead of sitting reserved for 18 days and not knowing where I'm going, the max I will have to sit reserved is five days. The rest of the month I'll actually have a schedule and I can say, oh, on the, the 12th of March I'll be here or I'm laying over here, or you know, I'll know how to pack, I'll know what to wear, I'll know when I actually have to come to work, and that will allow me to be home here in Houston, Texas more often, and really pick my real estate business back up. Because as y'all know, as of now, like today is Monday, I'm flying back out to New York Tuesday to go to work Wednesday and start a, um, a three-day reserve block. So for those three days, currently, right now, I don't know what I'll be doing. I, more than likely, I probably won't be flying. I'll probably just be sitting, waiting for a phone call for the three days. Or I could get assigned a trip. Like, I just don't know. With our first class program, I'll be able to look at my schedule and say, oh, this is where I'm going, this is what I need to pack, and this is when I'll be back. Also be able to bid for a schedule. So what I'm hoping for, <laughs> praying for I really don't know if this will work but what I want to do is be able to just bid to work weekends only flying weekends only Friday Saturday and Sundays um, and be in Houston Monday through Thursday to um, work my real estate business that's the idea that I have in my mind I'm still very junior at the company so if I bid for weekends only I might not get it I might get it most people don't want to work weekends so I might really get that and that would be amazing for me like amazing my goal is to be back home um, by June or July and um, have my schedule set like that. That would be so good, y'all. Like, y'all don't even know. That would allow me to just fly out either like Thursday night or early Friday morning, work my pairing. Pairing is my shift, I should say. Um, come back Sunday and then fly back to Houston, work Monday through Thursday and do it all over again. Like, that's how I want my life to be that's how I have it in my mind right now so I know that I just have to be patient and put in the time and build my seniority and it will get there I know this video has kind of been all over the place but I just really wanted to kind of give y'all an idea of how I make it work I hope this video has helped you think of some other jobs or careers that can help you with another source of income while you are a brand new reserve flight attendant because y'all know we don't get paid that much it's just the simple truth we really don't um, but once you put in a few years you do make really great money and your schedule is so much better um, so right now I'm just really dedicated to um, growing my real estate business in the ways that I can for now and um, molding my schedule to have a lifestyle by design. The whole purpose that I decided to go into real estate in the first place, why I decided to become a flight attendant, because these were goals of mine, dreams of mine, and I had a vision of how I wanted to live my life. I know it's not going to happen ASAP, it's not going to happen overnight, but I'm working towards it and I see things come into fruition. So that's all I have for you all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. You can email me. I'll put my email down here. Um, send me DMs on Instagram. I get those all the time and I do respond. Whatever way you can contact me, please do it. I'm always here to help. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel, please. And tell you all I have a goal to get to at least a thousand subscribers, hopefully for Christmas. That would be a great Christmas gift. Um, I'm about 400 people away. 
So make sure you're sharing this video, liking this video, so everybody that you know can see this and tell them to subscribe, okay? Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.